everybody. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Dave Brown along with Corey Mackman. We are set to go with another big day of USWA Championship Wrestling. Got a big one, day. We've got a big one. Texas Heavyweight Champion in that mouth to be running, Brian Christopher. He'll be in here. Richard and Liam have those crazy moon dogs out here again today. Dr. Death at an expiration of time match. Flamboy and Eric Emery, Tony Falk going against uh, Cat Garrett, and he'll have his partner out here a little bit later. That'll be an interesting exploration of time. That should be up. a very good match, and of course, uh, Brian Christopher is the Texas champion. He'll be showing up very shortly. You stay with us. We'll be back. <laughs> of guys that have been after each other for quite some time now talking about Kamala and Coco Beware the Birdman uh, Kamala had the uh, the world title Coco wins it yeah. but just this past week Kamala oh, took the belt back, back. Yeah. take a look at some highlights right here ah, every time Coco goes for clean the break Kamala nails him and Coco comes back with a couple of rights and left of his own working over the gun the giant working him over Kamala He's got the house mic and nails Coco with it. Coco and Kamala. Hey, look at that. Here comes Friday. Kamala's attendant. He comes over. He's soaking Coco over there. Oh, he's soaking him over there with that big foot. Referee Frank Morrell gave him a four count over there. Oh, that Friday goes over and chokes. Coco's got to try to beat Kamala. He's got to try to beat Friday. Oh, I tell you, I give Coco a chance to get in the ring. The Birdman gets in. Kamala slams him into the turnbuckle. The Birdman trying to get going. Comes off the road. Picks Kamala up. Oh, he picks him up in the air and finally slams the big man. Boy, it takes a lot of power for that, and Coco's done it. He slams Kamala. What a drop kick there. Outside of the ring now, the Birdman still working. Kamala. Ah, Kamala, let's go to the top. Coco moving out of the land. He and now referee Frank Morrell. And Coco goes after Kamala now. Takes Kamala right into the ring post. Kamala down on the floor. Coco is trying to help Frank up over there. Friday's over trying to help Kamala up. Kamala's back up on his feet, and Coco nails him with a right hand. Nails him again, and Kamala. Oh, he's trading away for Coco there now. Coco choking Kamala. Coco. Ah, referee Frank Morales said, ring the bell. and uh, 13 seconds into the bout. Oh, he gives the bout to Kamala. Referee has declared Kamala the winning count and Coco out in 12 minutes and 14 seconds. And in the ring right now, we've got Don Kelly. He is waiting for the Texas champion, Brian Christopher, who is coming in here. Here he comes. Well, you called it right, Corey. He came in through the curtains with his mouth running. <laughs> Brian Christopher, yeah, he's got it. I mentioned the champion, Brian. I sure did. The Texas champion. He is so proud of that belt. And, uh, I mean, you know, you win the belt, you're proud of it. There's yeah. no doubt about it. But uh, the attitude goes beyond pride with Brian Christopher. Oh, indeed. Oh, man. This guy is... Full something. attitude, boy. Oh, he's going out to the referee now, telling him something. Running uh, Kevin Christian in here. Uh, you... He says, ring the bell, and let's get underway. And Mr. Christopher... I better pay attention to the opponent now, not the referee, not the crowd. Ah, a little intimidation for Don Kelly. Brian Christopher, he's been talking since he got here, and it continues. Here's the point. Yeah, he's underway with Don Kelly. One fall, 15 minutes in time. Oh, Brian Christopher, Texas heavyweight champion. Boy, he's glad about it, too, isn't he, Dave? He sure is. He's proud of that belt. Oh, well, going after Don Kelly, series of rights and a couple of elbows. He's worn Kelly down now, right hand by Christopher. Oh, slaps Don Kelly over there. 
He just stopped Kelly and going after him. He's using that fist repeatedly. One after another, Christopher takes Kelly, whips him into the ropes now. Elbow that sends Dunn Kelly down, and Brian Christopher, holder of the Texas heavyweight title, and he is falling down on Don Kelly with an elbow now. Working Kelly over, this Christopher, he's a tough character, I tell you, he can hold his own, but that mouth of his, Somebody's going to have to save that mouth of his, I tell you. You're exactly right. He's, uh, he can wrestle. He's got the ability. There is absolutely no doubt. He's going for the cover. Oh, he broke the cover. Yeah, there he goes with that stuff again. You can just barely see her uh, across the ring standing up. That's Laura Davenport who's out here again uh, making notes about this match. Yeah, she's out here. I guess we got to put up with her today for some reason. Oh, big foot by Christopher. Good move there by uh, Brian Christopher, and he's working Don Kelly over now. Picks Kelly up, setting him up for something here. Suplex on Don Kelly, and Christopher. Uh, Tell Lauren Davenport, are you watching this? He had a pin cover there on Kelly and didn't go for the cover. Instead, he's out on the rope. Climbing up on the top rope now. Christopher! Set! Thumbs down! Oh, big leg on Kelly. That's it. One, two, three. Ryan Christopher. That's the champion gets the win. Boy, he went three quarters of the way across the ring as he flew off that top rope through the air with a final insult to somebody in the crowd. He left Don Kelly lying there, and Brian Christopher has himself a victory here today on USWA Championship Wrestling. He's still celebrating. We'll be back after this. Right, I know you're still happy about that victory here. I know we've got an interview scheduled, but not right now. W while you're here, though, you might want to take a look at this because there is a brand new Southern heavyweight champion. Watch this action right here. Oh, he slugs Jimmy, lays it out. Falls with an elbow. Missed that time. Went for another one. Jimmy moved out of the way. On his feet now. Boogie Woogie, man. Handsome Jimmy. Comes on the ropes. Nail back to them. Southern champion, the legend, handsome Jimmy Vagant, and guess who you got to be going against come Monday night? I know, I know. So when I drove up this morning, I came in, I got dressed, and Eddie Marley comes to me, says, yeah. Texas champion, <laughs> sir, Mr. Brian Christopher, next week, you'll be wrestling handsome Jimmy Vagant. <laughs> and then, you know, Dave, I started to think about... A long, 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 long time ago when handsome Jimmy Valiant was so big and had such a big chest and little bitty waist, oh, big muscles, yeah. But Dave, I was only about this big when that happened. Oh, I was so wee, wee, wee little. And now it looks like the rose burst. Because I've done the growing up. And handsome... You look like a slinky, my friend. I'm going to tell you right now, 
When you get in the ring with me, I don't know if you saw this. I know you saw it. And if you had to get in the ring with me, you'd be scared, wouldn't you? Huh? Because I'm mean, I'm nasty, and I'm a big, strong man. Well, there's no doubt about it. You're big, you're strong, you have the Texas title. But the guy you were wrestling here today was not this man right here. Here he comes. Handsome Jimmy Valiant, boogie woogie man himself, the boy from New York City. And he's got the Southern Heavyweight title swung over his shoulder. It, this may take a while. And sorry, I, Brian's going to be steaming during this whole thing because look at the fans' reaction here. Oh, he doesn't like that at all. He thought he'd run his mouth, but he better look out for that man right there. Oh, oh, oh. Reach the face. Look out for a handsome Jimmy Bayon. Here he comes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? One of the fans' favorites. You look it up in the dictionary, and you may see this man's picture right here. Handsome Jimmy Valiant. Welcome. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Dave Brown. Brian, I have something for you, baby. I have something. Handsome Jimmy got something for the boy. I got I mean, you know, just talking, oh, listen, Brian, I've known you, brother, since you are this big. I used to change your diapers. In uh, fact, I used to change half the people in this audience diapers. Dave Brown, I tell you, I've never changed your diapers, but I changed half the kids in Memphis, Tennessee, and half the kids in Louisville, half the kids all over the United States. I used to change their diapers. Just take it easy, kid. Everything's going to be all right. Well, I'm going to tell you what, handsome. By the looks of you, you wouldn't even fit into a diaper right now. Huh? What you got to say about that? Brian, me and you, brother, listen, listen to me, man. Don't get, I knew a guy that was all uptight. He got excited all the time. He, he had ulcers. I told you, he had a heart attack. He couldn't even perform. He couldn't even make babies. That's what's going to happen to you if you just don't take it easy. Calm down, brother. We can wrestle. We can go into the ring. We can shake hands before the match. We can shake hands after the match. Hey, everything's fine, brother. Hey, you got a belt? I got a belt. We'll go wrestle, and then we can be friends. Handsome, it's obvious. You didn't see what just happened in here. And you ain't been watching me in the weeks past, huh? You hadn't been watching me, had you? Because if you had, then you would not want to get in the ring with me. Because I'm going to break you in half, handsome, and it's not going to take very much. Listen, kid, listen now. Listen to me, please. If you want to hang around like old handsome Jimmy Valiant, handsome Jimbo from Mentho, if you want to hang around a long, long time, you better just calm down. Don't take everything so seriously. In other words, just lay back, you know, just... You know, just chill out. Just chill out, kid. That's all you got to do. We'll go. We'll wrestle. Monday night. Hey, the best man wins. Let's shake hands. Hey, let's be friends. I like good advice to me there, Brian. Well, well. Handsome Jimmy, I'll admit it. I have been your fan for a long time, ever since I was so big, yeah. And, uh... If you want to go down there next week and just wrestle and be friends, I guess that'll be all right. All right. You want to shake hands? Yeah, we'll shake. We'll, we will shake hands then, and we can shake hands now. All right, but wait a minute. No, no, don't shake hands this way. Hey, let's give me five right here. Look at him. Look at him. Boogie woogie. Come on, baby. Give me five, brother. Give me the game five. Yes, sir. Come on, baby. 
Yeah, yeah Jack. Lay it on me. That's it. Look at here. Look at here. Now, turn right here. Give me a little booty. Give me a little booty. Okay. No, 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 let's do it over here. Let's do it. You're fine. All right, baby. All right. What? What in the world is he doing there? He just jumped up. Bill, it, it, Jimmy, now you're trying to be friends. Oh, Brian, boy, I tell you, he has, has a bad attitude. Just nailed handsome in here. He jumped on Jimmy. Jimmy was trying, like you said, they were trying to be friends with him in here, saying a lot of good things about Brian and Brian down the front behind. Here comes Come that. He wanted five, didn't you? He, yeah, he don't want five that way. Eddie's staying between them there. We're gonna, let's let's uh, we're gonna go to a break. Oh, yeah, well that's just disgusting, Brian. That's what it is. But you better be looking out for Jimmy Valiant. We'll be back here in a moment. It has been just a, just a cycle of abuse by the Moon Dogs. Now, the way young kids break into the wrestling business is that they are booked on preliminary matches. Right. Uh, you know, you know, your main event matches are your top wrestlers. And uh, and when a kid is breaking into the business, he sometimes finds himself booked in uh, in uh, preliminary matches, or he finds himself booked in matches against. Some of the big stars, like on television matches and things like that. Well, that's what's been going on against these moon dogs for the last few weeks. And just take a look at some of the abuse they've been dishing out. Well, Dazzler Hayes being beat off by Spike. He hit boy. Ricky Hutchin. Yeah, boy. Did he nail that young guy? I tell you, they kept Dazzler with that chair. These guys, I tell you, it's bad for them to come out here. Oh. Why don't you get them out of here? I'm telling you. Beat these guys like that. Turn that table over on Dazzler Hayes. Boy, this is hard the way they beat these young Once guys. Once again, the Moon Dogs running wild out here. Got the that table running all oh, back on the that wall. Bell and Spike dropping oh, it. Yeah, Eddie, come on. Dropping it on top hey, of Ricky here. Hutchins. Yeah, Eddie, come on. These guys are sick. They're sick, I tell you, Moon Dog. Here's here's Eddie Marlin. Maybe he can uh, convince Richard Lee to get him out of here. Frank Morell is trying. Uh, there they go with a desk, carrying the desk up hey, and picking up chairs. Oh, look out! Watch him, Eddie. Watch him, Eddie. Here comes the other one. Watch him. Oh boy! There goes our desk, Dave. There it goes again. Boy. Richard Lee refusing to control the Moon Dogs. That's what it is. Hey, well, stupid is what it is. Richard Lee, for heaven's sake, they won the match, but oh. 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 boy, I tell you, that's hard. Richard Wallace should take them out of here. Oh boy, they beat these guys like that. Oh man, get out there. Beating up Chris Frazier and uh, Brian Collins, now using that desk. That's our, that's our desk that we uh, use. They put it in the ring, and there's young Brian Collins being pressed down on that. Meanwhile, they knocked TD what? down, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, they knocked oh, TD oh, down. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Blowing that whistle, and you know, when he blows that whistle, that's just a signal for them to keep it up. The Moon Dogs. Oh, boy. Oh, I tell you. They just Richard. blasted Freezer. Oh my goodness. We're world champions, hey, Dave Brown. Look out, and we're dominating the USWA. We are the dominating force of the USWA. And I want the two yellow stinking chickens that I know in the back that deliberately tried to injure me. I want them out here, and I want them out here right now. Richard, you need to get the guys out of here, what you need to do. Watch out over there, Dave. dog. I'll drop that desk just on top of Freezer Thompson down here on the floor. Meanwhile, the other one has got uh, that folding metal chair. Oh, my goodness. The Moon Dogs continue to run wild. Richard Lee with a folding metal chair himself collecting the world championship belt. Oh, oh my Beat goodness. That look young at this. Here comes Eddie Marlin. Get him out of here. Here comes Eddie. Watch out, Eddie. Oh, look out. Look out, Eddie. Man, these guys are wild, I tell you. Richard, I wish we could get them out of here. Now, this is ridiculous. 
They come in here. They've already fought, fought the bout. Take them out of here. Eddie Marlin's trying to get them out of here. They continue. Oh, they it's nailed TD, TD who was refereeing. Oh, Eddie, why don't you try to get these guys out of here? Anybody? Hey, look out. Well, the Moondogs into that interview for us, thank goodness, in a way. Except they've got Chris Frazier over here on the desk. Oh, uh, Tim Wilson out here on the floor. Oh, my goodness. Using the back of that chair. Blue dog spot across the back while Spike had that garbage can working on Chris Frazier. Meanwhile, Big Black Dog in the ring. He's working over Frazier. Oh, oh, my goodness. Good Referee Frank Morrell trying to get order restored, not having much luck. You can't blame him. Listen. What? guys tough to control except by Richard Lee. He's the only one that can call him off. Richard, why don't you take these guys out of here? Boy, this is, that trash can is, is torn to pieces. It's so up. That aluminum can there. Boy, I tell you. Hey, come on now. Oh, screw that guy over there. Lou Tim Wilson over there back behind the curtain. He's on that chair over there after now. The Moondogs working on Chris Frazier and Tim Wilson down here on the floor. There's the action. That's, uh, that's uh, Freezer Thompson and Big Black Dog in the ring. Boy, that's Freezer you see being choked. Oh, got that bell over him on here. That big bell on his chest. You don't want to come in there tonight? Come on down. What? That's a word from Richard Lee. Our bell is torn pieces over there too, Dave. Yep. Destroyed everything in the studio just about. These there they go guys. again, over behind the desk, picking up Tim Wilson. They about they have smashed him. Oh my goodness! Boy, they've got him beat so bad in there. Oh my goodness! Oh man, I tell you, Richard, why don't you take the oh, guys out of here? Man. Look at that guy's back. Oh, I tell you, the beat up on these youngsters here, the That's blue dogs. Ridiculous. ridiculous Dave it's, it, you know it just and, and one of them over here with yeah. Chris Frazier pinned under the desk and he's standing on it I can't ring the bell the bell is destroyed take him out of here the bell's over with boy he makes me sick with that kind of stuff oh boy he nailed that guy with that chair is payback, but it's paying back the wrong people if that's what they're trying to do. Hey, Richie, why don't you get out of there? This is uh, Reuben Thomas. They're really working on that leg. No oh, yeah. about it. After Big Black Dog's leg was hurt earlier in the week, you saw that video. Look out. Well, hey. oh, I tell you, almost didn't move in time that time. Crazy Moondog Spice got it. Table. Working on young Trey Keller. I first look at him in the USWA. Meanwhile, the other moon dog working on Ruben Thomas in the ring, working on his leg in there. Richard, why don't you take these guys out of here? Oh, I tell you, that's bad, Eddie. Get him out of here, would you? Boy, boy. Oh, he breaks this thing again on Dunn. Boy, I tell you, these stupid moon dogs and Richard Lee. Lee's got that chair and rim. Don Kelly. Oh, there goes the you know, they, trash can. Boy, they, they had one of those cardboard disposable trash cans in here, and they had hidden inside there a metal trash can, and he's using it to beat up on Chris Frazier right now. That's bad, Dave. I tell you, that is bad. These guys come out here with all kind of objects they can get. I just beat up on these guys. Oh, my God, boy, I tell you. These guys, that's Moondogs. Richard Lee's got him out here. One 
football game and 15 minutes inside. Their opponents are Cousin John and Kevin Carson, their opponents. Oh, they're working these two young guys over there. Look out! Look out. inside of the ring working over Cousin John. Other Moondogs got Kevin Carson outside of the ring and Richard Lee's holding that stupid metal chair. Rams him right into the thing over there. Moondog spot grabs the chair. Oh, he slams Kevin Carson with that metal chair. Boy, boy, these goes over and gets Cousin John. Richard, why don't you get the guys in the ring and he's like, get them out of here. Boy, this is bad the way they beat up on these guys. I want to take a moment here to talk to a couple of folks. Well, well, I hear the music. I believe they're on the way. Here they come, the King, Jerry Lawler, and Jeff Jarrett. Lauren Davenport is standing over there. And Jerry Lawler is saying, hey, in the time you left, get out of here. The crowd greeting the King and Jeff Jarrett. Boy, what a couple of tremendous individual wrestlers. And what a tag team these guys have made since they got together. They have really looked good, especially in these recent battles against those goofy moon dogs. Here comes the king right here. The moon dogs have been running wild. They've been with the chairs and the garbage cans and all that sort of thing. But I think if anybody can stop them, it's you two. Well, I hope, uh, I, I hope we can, Dave. Now, I, you know, once again, we got to talk to Red up there. We got to give these people some sound over here where they can hear what we're saying because we got a lot of things we want to say about the moon dogs today. Can you hear, hear us over there? All right. First of all, now, as I said, <laughs> they're fired up today. Before, before I get into this uh, talk about the moon dogs, I, I had a message handed to me this morning over the telephone and I just want to real quickly say hello to a young man and give him all our best wishes not only from me but from everybody connected with the USWA. His name is Johnny Waxler, he's a 13-year-old young man from uh, out of Shelby County here or out of Shelby County and uh, I understand that yesterday he was he was taken out of the trash for his, his parents there and burning and anyway there was a, an accident involving gasoline and the young man was burned real severely and he is in the burn center of the med his name, as I said, is Johnny Waxler. And Johnny, we're praying for you, buddy. Get on out of there and get well for us, okay? All right. <laughs> Jeff's got something he wants to say about some doctors. Too. All right, Jeff. Yeah, now that's all a little bit more serious note. But this is, I uh, just talked to my physical therapist and my, uh, uh, my doctors. And uh, this paper right here releases me. And uh, I'm going to be ready to go Monday night. Moon Dogs, you better watch out. Jerry's, Jerry's going to tell just a little bit about the match. It's, it's, it's pretty interesting, Dave. you got to listen to this. All right, yeah, something special I hear. Fill me in on what's going on now Monday night. Well, Dave, we just sat and watched, and everybody over here and everybody at home sat and watched about 10 minutes. And I think that tape was 10 minutes long, uh, and that was a condensed version because of what these moon dogs have been doing to these young guys that uh, come in here. As you, as you said, these, these are young guys who are aspiring or hoping to someday be full-time professional wrestlers. Most of these guys are guys who have another job somewhere, and Eddie Marlin calls them to come down here. And, and, and you know, let's, let's face it, the bottom line is uh, wrestling like pro football or like pro baseball or whatever, bottom line, it's a business. And Eddie Marlin and the USWA are in business to sell wrestling to the public. I mean, you want the people, he wants the people to come to see live, live wrestling matches. And if you give away your, your, all your top matches on television, you know, then, then you don't have a, you're giving away your product. So sometimes you book, Eddie Marlin books guys like these young guys against the top stars. It's basically for exposure. Now what these moon dogs have been doing out here on television to these young guys 
is it goes way beyond taking advantage of them, Dave. It goes into trying, it, it goes beyond just trying to hurt guys. As you saw on that tape, these guys are trying to cripple these young guys. We've had guys that have, that have come out here and wrestle these guys and, and not even be able to go to their regular jobs for a week. Not, and Eddie Marlin call them to come back and they say, no, I don't, I don't, if I'm gonna wrestle the Moondogs, forget it. I mean, you know, they, they forget about a career in wrestling, that sort of thing. But there's an old saying, and let me ask you over there, have you all heard, have you all heard the old saying, what goes around comes around, right? Even, even in the Bible, Dave, even in the Bible it says, you reap what you sow. Now for anybody out there, or little kids or whatever, who don't understand, let me put it as simple as possible. It's, it's basically like this, what you do in life, what you do to other people, how you treat other people, will someday come back to you in the same way. In other words, if you treat somebody badly, if you go around being a jerk all your life, some way, someday, it may not be tomorrow, it may not be next week, it may not be until next year, but someday, somebody's gonna treat you the same way, and somebody's gonna be a jerk to you. And Moondog, it's now payback time. As we said, what goes around comes around, and that's where we got the idea for this match. They are the world tag team champions. We want to get them in the ring. We want to fight them because we're not afraid of those jerks. And there are some guys that we have waiting in the back that are fixing to come out here. And the idea of this match is it's a lumberjack match. And that's, that's fairly basically simple right there in the fact that that means there's going to be guys around the ring. When, a, when a, one of the wrestlers gets thrown out, their job is to put them back in the ring. But these lumberjacks are going to be real special and the fact that these lumberjacks are gonna have chairs just like the moondogs have been beating on these guys with and when us or the moondogs get thrown out of the ring their job is gonna be to beat those whoever's thrown out of the ring to beat them with those chairs until they get back in the ring can we bring our can we bring our lumberjacks out here right now can we get those guys to come on out here right now come here guys yep those guys look familiar, they sure do. They do look familiar. These are eight or ten of the guys that you just saw getting their brains beat out right here on television. Guys, Ricky Hayes. Hey guys, how you doing? I, I mean, I'm being perfectly honest with you. Donnie Kelly, T.D. Steele. Some of these guys, I don't even know their names. There's Chris Frazier, but I do know Jeff, and you know what happened to some of these guys. Just ask him a few words there. Oh, Ricky? You from Dyersburg, and uh, we got the Wilson brothers back over here. Come over here just a second. I was just talking to him in the back, Dave, and he, I went up to him and asked him what he thought about the last time he faced him, guys. Tell me what you said. Did you, you had to walk around. Tell him the position you walked. I can't. I got. They beat my back. I can't walk for three days. So he had to lay out of work for a complete week just because yeah. these guys. Ricky, he's a fine young wrestler, and he's coming up real fast. Tell him, Ricky, about uh, your shot Monday night. Well, all I got to say is I come down here a week, week after week, and these moon dogs like to beat me half to death. Monday night, Monday night, I'm on. It's it's payback time Monday night, buddy. When one of those moon dogs come out, it's not gonna take them long to get back in that ring, Dave. That's exactly, <laughs> That's exactly right. right. TD's one of the guys that he he. Everybody knows TD from around these parts. He's done his best. He goes week in, week out, and and, and Eddie Marlin went to him and asked him to wrestle, and he said, I'm, I want to further my career, and I don't believe the Moondogs are going to be further my career. T.D., you going to be ready Monday night? Boy, yes, yeah, we'll be ready! I'm going to get fucked up! Be it! Chris Frazier, I know one thing, and Moondogs, like Jerry said, it's a title match. And that's exactly what this whole thing started over up in Kennett, Missouri. Well, Monday night, these guys, they're not going to be afraid to swing these chairs because they've taken beating after beating. And I know one thing, me and Jerry, we're going to do everything we can to get those belts back around our way. That's right. Let me just say, Richard Lee, I know you're in the back watching this, and I know that you look at all of these guys, and all that goes through your mind is what your moon dogs have done to these guys in the past. So you may not be real worried, but I'll tell you this. What's going through these guys' minds is the same thing. It's exactly what your moon dogs did to them when they were in the ring out here with these chairs and with this bell and with this desk. And Monday night, when they're around that ring, we've talked to each and every one of them. If your moon dogs or you, Richard Lee, so much as step one foot out of that ring, they are going to bust your stinking head wide open with these chairs. Do you understand that? So what that means? 
needs is that's going to leave the four of us in the ring, and we're going to hurt you like we said where it hurts you the most, right in the pocketbook, because we're going to pin you, and we're going to take those world tag team titles and put them around the waist of Jeff Jarrett and the King, and these guys right here are going to back us all the way. Am I right, guys? Get ready for it Monday night, I tell you. Boy, not only do they have to face the King and Jeff Jarrett, there's not going to be any escape. Those guys with the chairs, can you imagine the thrill it would be for those guys after the beating that they sustained at the hands of the Moondog to get just one shot, just one shot at one of those Moondogs oh, yeah. come Monday night as they're stationed around the ring as Lumberjack. Boy, what a match that one's going to be. Well, I'm really Let's, interested today. Yes, sir. Let's check the whole guard while we're at it here. Opening match, Tony Falk is going to be going against Cat Garrett. We don't have a picture of Cat, but we'll see him a little bit later on today. He's scheduled in... Uh, in a match here. Fine wrestler going to be going against uh, Tony Falk in the opener. 7.30 is when it all begins. Dr. Death will be coming in there. Uh, Nurse Pratchett will be in the corner. Sure well, that... Look at that out of the corner there with Cobra there, though. Yeah. Aunt Gertie. Aunt Gertie. Yeah, I want, maybe we... Uh, I hope Cobra uh, we can talk to a little bit later on and find out a little bit about Aunt Gertie. But I know about Nurse Cratchit and that bedpan. This uh, should be a fine match, too. Oh, yeah. Aunt Gertie could be an equalizer there for King Cobra. Return grudge match coming up then. Dirty white boy with dirty white girl in the corner against Eric Embry. Not only did Embry hurt... Uh, Tony, the dirty white boy, knock him off that scaffolding. But also, what he did last week oh, that uh, was in bad. regard to Kim, that was horrible. Wasn't that hard? That was horrible. Tony's back. Oh, yeah, look out, done. Eric Embry. Indeed. Unified world title's going to be on the line. Well, I beg your pardon. Beg your pardon here. We've got uh, we got a Southern title against the Texas title. Brian Christopher, and you've heard what Brian had to say about the whole thing against handsome Jimmy Valiant. Valiant came out and said, Brother, I've known you since you were a little bitty kid. And, you know, we can wrestle. We can wrestle quality championship match, be friends now, and be friends when it's over. And we thought Brian Christopher had agreed to that. He's and something else, isn't he? Well, as Jimmy turned to walk away, thinking everything was fine, and, and uh, yeah, Christopher said, how about, how about another, look, give me five one more time, and yeah. he nails him with a fist and then jumps He'll pay for that, though. He will pay for that, I guarantee uh, you. Absolutely. Absolute no time. doubt about it. The boogie woogie man will, answer, will, will have an answer for Brian Christopher. As a matter of fact, he may have a, some answer for him right here. Here comes handsome Jimmy this way. Got that southern title in high. Hey, Jimmy? Who does this young fuck think he is? You know, I come out here and I try to talk to this kid and I try to be nice and I try to send him to school and I know, I know for a fact, Jack, that you can get more with honey than you can with steak. Do you understand what I mean? I'm trying to take this kid and send him to school. I am educating this boy because he's a nice, good-looking boy. Well, Brian Christopher, do you think you're a man by sucking a bunch of hands of Jimmy? Well, I'll tell you, baby, you better be a man because, brother, brother, this man right here is going to come down your throat. Listen, punk, you've got the big head. Your head's so big, daddy. Every since you won the title right now, you know, I've had so many of these, daddy. I know how to handle it. It goes to the brain. They go, they get the prestige, they get all kinds of big time offers, you understand? They get money, it just blows their minds out. You know where I'm coming from, brother. You know where I'm coming from. Well, I'll tell you something. Mr. Christopher, listen to me. You may have the shortest, the shortest wrestling career. Because it's going to be man to man. Handsome Jimmy, the Booga Wooga man, is coming for you. There's the word. I don't think I need to add a thing to that. Handsome Jimmy Vagas against Brian Christopher Monday night at the Mid South Coliseum. That's a main event anywhere, let me tell you. But that is not the final match of the night. The final match, oh, I beg, okay, yeah, I forgot about this one. The USWA world title is going to be on the line as Dr. Tom Pritchard yep. with Miss Texas in the corner will be going against the unified world champion in Kamala. Now, that main event of the night, the Lumberjack match. In this one, the world title is also at stake. The world tag team titles are at stake. 
Richard Lee and his Moon Dogs in there against Jeff Jarrett and Jerry Lawler. And as Jeff and Jerry explained just a few minutes ago, lumberjacks around the ring are going to be some of the youngsters that have taken such a beating at the hands of the Moon Dog in recent weeks. And as Can't I said earlier, they've got those chairs. You know they're just itching for the Moon Dogs to come out of that ring so that they can blast them with a chair. 7.30, Monday night, that's the bell time. You be there for the wild USWA Championship Wrestling, which will be coming up. We will be back here in just a moment. Somewhere around are the Moon Dogs. Here comes Richard Lee leading the way. He's got that folding metal chair in hand. As he heads this way, they're about set for a match. Dave, you ever, uh, you ever run into situations that just make you stick to your stomach? Well, I've got one right here. First of all, I want to say something. You showed a piece of tape on TV just a minute ago that showed my dog beating people with chairs. Well, let me tell you something. My dog, don't bring any chairs to the ring. My dog, don't bring any trash cans to the ring. Everybody else does. If you remember a few weeks ago, we had a whole stack of stuff. And where did it come from? It come from Jeff Jarrett throwing it in the ring. Well, then they turn around and they, they start blaming my dog. They say, my dog do this. My dog do that. The only thing that my dog has been trained to do is wrestle by the rules. Go in, wrestle a match. As soon as you get the pinfall, get out. Go on back to the dressing room. Don't lollygag around out here. But no, it don't work that way. Everybody wants to pick up chairs. They want to pick up boards. They want to pick up trash cans. They want to hit my dog. They want to hit me. Then what are we supposed to do? Stand here and take it? Well, let me tell you something. We're not going to do it. And week after week after week, they've had me involved in six-man tags, eight-man tags. And I got to take it. Well, what are they going to do next? Bring out the National Guard? No. They're going to bring out a bunch of geese and put them around the ring with steel chairs. I don't care. Bring anybody you want to. Because my dogs are the world champions. My dogs are the toughest thing that ever hit professional wrestling. And my dogs can protect themselves. We we'll wrestle. We wrestle by the rules. When they want to break the rules, we'll break the rules. And I'm going to tell you something, Jeff Jarrett. I'm going to tell you something, Jerry Lawler. Jeff, you come out here and you start talking about your physical therapist released you. <laughs> What's that mean? Your girlfriend got tired of you hiding in the house and told you to go get a job? Jerry Lawler, <laughs> you're so ate up in misery, brother, because you're not the king of the mountain anymore. My Moon Dogs are, and it's Moon Dog Mountain, brother. So bring them on. Anytime, any place, bring them on. Because my dogs wrestle by the rules, and I'm going to tell you right now, they don't need no chairs. Get them, boys. There they go into the ring. Chris Frazier in there with Deuce Mason. And the referee. Kevin Christian said, ring the bell. The Moondogs go after it. Believe about a half of what you heard from Richard Lee there. Richard Lee says, we never bring chairs in. What is, what is that in his yeah, hand? That's right. He's brought in a metal chair, and he started the whole thing with these chairs and garbage cans and everything. Well, of course he did. He came in with had one of them painted up so with Jeff Jarrett's name on it and all that sort of stuff. And then to come in here and claim, we just wrestle by the rules. Yeah. We never break the rules. That's a bunch of baloney, Richard Lee's talking. And these moon dolls are going berserk here again today. Going out to Deuce Mason and Chris Frazier. There goes Frazier outside of the ring, out on the country floor there now. Moon dolls got Deuce Mason in the ring there now. Yep. Got him across the knee. One of them's up on the rope. Big powerful moves. Ah, oh, they go for the pit cover. That's something different. Well, That's they got a pin. Yeah, one, That's two, it. Three. Yeah. Now let's take them out yeah, of here. They have won the one. match, and Richard Lee says we don't lollygag around. We win the match. But look at the ring there. 
You see right there, Dave Brown? That man's got a chair, and he's going to try and beat my dog with it. Well, watch. That man is out in the ring, and, they, and he just shoved that chair into his hand, and now the moon dog is picking it up. Don't, uh, I'm telling you right now, Dave, my dogs are going to protect themselves. If these people want to keep bringing these chairs to the ring like that, they're going to get amused on them. He brought it. He's going to eat it. Oh, did you see that? Yeah. They got the bid on Look you. out. Look, Look out. out. Ah, boy. Chris Frazier slammed into the table here. One moon dog after him. The other one whips the chair in his hand after Deuce Mason. Ah, hammered him across the back again. There's Eddie again. Okay, Eddie. Oh, boy. All right, we're going to get him out of here. Let's take a break. We'll return. <laughs> Let me tell you, including a uh, group of Cub Scouts, Pack 144 from Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church All right. in Whitehaven. There they are right here. Oh, we would yeah. love to have you join us for Studio Wrestling. Tickets are free. If you have a special group like the Scouts, be sure and include a phone number and tell us exactly how many tickets you'll need, and they'll need to get in touch with you by telephone. Here's the address, Studio Wrestling Tickets, WMC-TV, 1960 Union Avenue, Memphis, Tennessee, 38104. Don't forget to include that self-addressed stamped envelope. If you don't include that, you won't get your tickets back, so be sure to put that in there. Corey, lots of action coming up around the territory. A whole here. lot of it we got, Dave. Sure, indeed. Last night, Ripley, Mississippi, great crowd last night. Holly Springs is this Friday night, 7.30 at West College. Moondogs, the King, Jerry Lawler, Jeff Jarrett, Boogie Woogie Man, Handsome Jimmy be there, Eric Embry, Miss Texas, a whole lot of people lined up. This Friday night, Holly Springs at Russ College, bell time, 7.30. I'll be there, special guest ring announcer. Hope to see you at Russ College this Friday. Saturday night, Jonesboro, Arkansas, 8 o'clock at the Old Bell Community Center. Big line up there. You see everybody in Jonesboro. Thursday, April 2nd, Blavo, Arkansas, coming up. 8 o'clock at the National Guard Armory on Division Street. And also Friday, April 3rd, the next night, Terrell, Arkansas, USWA Championship Wrestling. There's the line up there for Terrell, the King, Jeff Jarrett, Moondogs, many more. Thursday, April 9th, back in Clarksdale at the Civic Auditorium. And that following night, Friday, April 10th, Kennan, Missouri. That concession stand classic, boy. We'll be out there in Kennan coming up April 10th. Big action coming up. Big action coming up here. You stay with us. Back with it in a moment. Referee Kevin Christian is there along with Tim Wilson. Here comes Dr. Death coming in. Nurse Cratchit not no, with doesn't today, appear huh? to be with him today. I suppose maybe uh, maybe she's uh, she's ill. She makes uh, she makes wrestling fans ill usually when she shows up. Referee calls for the bell, and I tell you what, the, the Moon Dogs are not going on the bell here. There we Can go. You get to it, okay. Really We're point. underway. Dr. Death and Tim Wilson in a one fall, 15 minutes in time, and. Dr. Dow slugging uh, Tim Wilson over there with a couple of big blows. Picks him up. Body slam on Wilson. Dr. Dow follows with a leg on him. Goes for the pin cover. Got two and picked him up. Boy, I tell you, these guys, when they had the guy already pinned, the bout could be over with. Tim Wilson. Oh, he has to take a little more humiliation from Dr. Death. That's what he's trying to do in here. And he took Wilson and caught him with a close line. You know, I was wondering if Dr. Death would be able to win a match without Nurse Cratchit over in the corner and that bedpan in her hand, but it looks like he's pretty well taking control of this one and has it well in hand. Dr. Death! Going out to Tim Wilson. Love Wilson. Wilson. Where you go, Tim, Doc? Big Tim Wilson up. Setting him up now. Big suplex there. Wilson went up in the air on that one. Dr. Death has a lot of power. He is built up. Could be a good solid wrestler, but with Nurse Scratching out there all the time in that silly bedpan. You never really get to see the whole side of Dr. Death. Big backdrop on Dr. Death. 
on Tim Wilson. Took him down. Dr. Death again, not going for a pin. He picks him up. Lars Wilson. Got him, uh, got him with a fist, didn't he? It looked yeah. like it from here. Yeah, he shoved the referee there, too. Dr. Death rolls Wilson into the rope. Big power move there. Power slam. Goes for the cover. Two, three. And he's yelling yeah. something to the referee. He got the three count on that. He got him, no doubt about it. The victory for Dr. Death, even though Nurse Cratchit is not here. A lot of times, folks contact us. How do I get involved in wrestling? Well, take a look and a note. Make a note of this right here. The world-renowned USWA Wrestling Academy comes to Nashville, Tennessee. The wrestling school that has produced legendary professional wrestlers. Jerry the King Lawler, Tommy Wildfire Rich, Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert, The Rock and Roll Express, Jeff Jarrett, and more. Now you can attend the USWA Wrestling Academy at Fitness Trainers in Nashville and be trained by the best. Send for your application today to USWA Wrestling Academy, P.O. Box 1783, Hendersonville, Tennessee, 37077. Be sure to enclose a self-addressed stamped envelope. Learn to wrestle from the best. The USWA Wrestling Academy. King Cobra is joining us right here, and uh, you've been uh, watching this Dr. Death wrestle, I understand. That's right, Lance. I've been watching the guy. You know, he's got a pretty good-looking body and all, and hey, but his style is kind of unorthodox. But uh, I've been noticing how he's been winning most of his matches. In fact, I've been noticing how he's been winning all of his matches. He got this uh, nurse patching, or whatever you want to call her. Right. I guess you can call her a uh, her. She's sitting around the ring, banging people over the head with his bedpan and stuff. But, you know, uh, to be honest with you, today. I really don't think it's a lady. In fact, I know it's not a lady. In fact, she looked like a man just putting her in the clothes. You know, but uh, when I, uh, then when I, I saw I had drawn him as an opponent, so what I did, you know, it, she kind of reminded me, in fact, I once had an aunt named Gertie that looked like a man dressed in woman clothes. So what I did, to kind of even the match up a little bit, I made a phone call, and uh, Monday night, I think I got a surprise for this old doctor, Death. Uh, I'm trying to get Aunt Gertie to come down, and she can and, 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 and instead of a bedpan, she carries a big old rolling pin. <laughs> so come Monday night, we aren't gonna be rolling dope. We're gonna be rolling on Miss a uh, Mr. Cratchit and uh Dr. Death. So <laughs> Monday night. I'm good and myself going to be here. We're going to take that business. Very good, Cobra. Thanks very much. We were wondering about that. Maybe that is the equalizer. Aunt Gertie with a rolling pin. That could take care of Nurse Cratchit. We'll be back here in just a moment. <laughs> About a week ago, we uh, were out here and, and uh, talking to Kim, Dirty White Girl, and all of a sudden, Eric Embry shows up. Oh. Let's take a look at what happened. This, yeah. this was disgusting, right? Like I said, he's ready to come back. He wanted to be here today, but he couldn't. He's got to wait a few more days before he comes back. So, like I said, I am real excited, and I'm ready for him to come back. Well, I'm sure you're. Matter of fact, I think we're all ready to see him back here. About the only one, I guess, who would not be ready to see him come back would be... Uh... And here he comes. Eric Embry right here. Eric, yeah, Eric's got a match coming up now. Eric, we've got your match coming up. We'd like to finish. She comes out here week after week, you know, and she talks about how obnoxious, what a piece of garbage I am and all that. But you're a man. You know, you can read between the lines of a woman. You know what she's actually saying is that she wishes that she could be my dirty white girl. You know what she's actually saying you're actually out here saying, week after week, that you wish I'd just come out here and give you a big kiss or something, aren't you? Huh? Eric and Bree, you are a, you are the nastiest piece of think, garbage think, I've think, ever saw what, in my that, life. That's what you can take 50 you're shots. saying you want a big kiss, don't you? Uh, uh, big kiss. Jim Bree. I think it's rather apparent that that's not exactly what she's no, what, saying. What, 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 she just said she liked it and wants it again, Dad. She did not. Come on, Embry. Come on. Come on, Kim. Tony's going to what? Leave her alone. Tony's going to what? He's going to kill you when he gets back. <laughs> you know what she just said? You can't hear it, man. You can read, but that, she said she wants me not doing it. She did not. She wants you to leave her alone. Come on. 
Come on, Embry. Well, he, what can you say about Eric Embry after watching something like that? But I tell you what, Tony Anthony, here he comes, and I'm going to stand back because I can tell you he is as upset as we knew he would be. Eric Embry, I just felt that I hated your stinking gut. But what you did last week to the white girl, brother, I can't put in the work because, man, you're going to have to take me on one-on-one, -on -one, brother. And you look deep in these eyes. I'm a man that don't care. You don't have sin. I've come out here time and time again. You don't put your finger on a white girl. But did you want to come out here and you want to try to humiliate her when I'm not around? Well, big boy, you look over your shoulder from now on because a building's not big enough. No matter where you go, Embry, I'm going to be there and I'm going to be your fat, stinking, obnoxious guts out. And there's not one thing you can do about it, punk. So you get ready, baby, because I'm coming after you. I'm coming for sweet revenge, not for myself, not because you crippled me, because you put your hands on a white girl. And Embry, you belong to me. You understand? We're out of here. The words of Tony Anthony, the dirty white boy. Right now, this special message from the USWA. Now you can have the stars of the USWA in your hometown. It's America's number one fundraiser, USWA Wrestling. The stars, the action, the excitement, USWA Wrestling. For more information on how you can raise money for your organization, write the USWA, Post Office Box 1783, Hendersonville, Tennessee, 37077, or call 615-824-8523. USWA Wrestling, America's number one fundraiser. Well, we want to take a look at this Monday night card coming up at the Mid-South Coliseum once again. We are looking for a big one down there. The special announcement a few minutes ago by Jerry Lawler and Jeff Jarrett about the uh, special Lumberjack stipulations oh, on yeah. the main event of the night. Boy, that, that one's That's gonna be gonna worth be seeing. Oh, yeah. And you take a look at young Brian Christopher. Brian Christopher said and Handsome Jimmy confirmed that uh, Jimmy has known him since he was a little bitty kid. And then he's trying to be friends and be classy about the whole thing. What happens? Brian Christopher kneels him from behind. Oh, let's, yeah. let's look at the whole card. Opening match. Cat Garrett will be going against Tony Falk in the opener. That should be an interesting match just to get things going. Then it's going to be Dr. Death with Nurse Cratchit. Dr. Death uh, and Nurse Cratchit, I'm sure, will have that uh, bedpan with her. And uh, King Cobra came out here and, and he said, okay. So he got, uh, he's got Nurse Cratchit in the bedpan. He said, I'm going to bring along my Aunt Gertie, and my Aunt Gertie's got a rolling pin with her, so that ought to even it up a little bit. King Cobra against Dr. Death at the Mid-South Coliseum. Return grudge match coming up. Eric Embry. Well, you saw the videotape. You heard what Tony Anthony had to say about the situation. He wasn't paying attention to much of anything except he is focused on Eric Embry. He is looking for him, and he wants to get even, not only for what he did to him, for knocking him off that scaffold and hurting him in a match several weeks ago, but also for that disgusting display that Embry oh, yeah. put on in regard to, uh, to Kim, the dirty white girl, just one week ago. So look out, Eric Embry. Dirty white boy is looking for you. Following that, it's going to be a Southern heavyweight title match against the Texas title. Yeah, Texas but... title holder, Brian Christopher. He's got a lot of confidence, and, you know, we, we, we complain about his attitude, yeah. but uh, let's don't overlook. A little more important than that, I think, though, is that Jimmy is going to be looking for revenge. Now, he's trying to uh, work some things out there with Brian. Christopher didn't want to listen and uh, nail Jimmy, but... Has to be ready for him Monday night. That's true. What I was going to say, though, is uh, let's not overlook the fact that Brian Christopher can, in fact, wrestle, too. Oh, he yeah. doesn't just step in that ring. He can back up that mouth, oh, and, yeah. uh, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on your point of view. So Christopher will be going against handsome Jimmy Valiant. This one takes on something a little extra special after the way Christopher treated Jimmy here today. Then the unified world title is on the line. Dr. Tom Pritchard is going to get a shot at the title which is held by the Ugandan giant Kamala. Kamala regaining the title just last week from Coco Beware. Dr. Tom Pritchard gets the chance this time. Then the world tag team titles are going to be on the line. There are going to be lumberjacks stationed around the ring. In the ring, you've got Jeff Jarrett and the King Jerry Lawler going against Richard Lee and his moon dogs. But those lumberjacks are going to be composed of young men who have been beaten up by the Moondogs with Indeed. metal chairs, garbage cans, the desk, our bell, 
all of that sort of stuff in recent weeks. They're going to put a chair in their hands, station them around the ring, and they have been instructed, if anybody, but especially if the Moondogs get out of the ring, you smack them with those chairs and knock them right back in the ring. The World Tag Titles on the line. That's going to be a wild one indeed. Lumberjacks around the ring. Can't wait to see that one. Oh, I tell you what, it's all going to happen Monday. It begins 7.30 at the Mid-South Coliseum. Don't you dare miss this USWA action which is coming up. We mentioned Kamala defending that uh, newly regained unified world title. Well, as usual, his manager had a few words about the situation, and here he is right now. Coco Ware, you're nothing but a bum like I said you were. You know, you're nothing but a nappy-haired purse snatcher. And you should realize crime doesn't pay. You stole something from me, Coco, and we got it back, as I promised. Now the belt's around the greatest USWA champion of all time, Kamala. Now, Jerry Lawler, let's get to you. You're nothing but a backstabbing scumbag. You're a snake in the grass, Lawler. How could you do what you've done to Kamala? He set you up for the big win against the Moondog, and you sucker punched him. I don't believe it. You couldn't beat the Moondog on your own, so he goes and sets you up for the big win, and you sucker him. You know, Laura, I figured out what happened. You couldn't stand it. You're so jealous of him. When he came to the ring, and thousands of people cheering for him. You just couldn't stand it, so you suckered him. You know, Laura, you're a no-good double-crossing backstabber, and you should go down in history with some of the great backstabbers of all time. Frank James shot his own brother in the back. Benedict Arnold was a backstabber, and Brutus, he stuck the knife so deep in Caesar's back. But you, Lower, I can compare you to one other backstabber. That's right, Lower, you're nothing but a Judas. And you better spend them 30 pieces of silver, because your last supper's coming. Now, if I didn't know any better, Lower, I could swear you were up in New York City backstabbing and snitching on John God. You know, here's another thing. They're sending us in the ring now against some quack doctor, Dr. Tom Pritchard. Isn't he that gynecologist that got super malpractice? Or is he the doctor that's treating Eddie Martin for Alzheimer's? Either way, Dr. Tom Pritchard, go listen to get some sound medical advice from that stupid Coco Ware, and he'll be smart enough to tell you to stay away from Kamala. And also, Judas Lawler, you're going to pay for stabbing me in the back. Nobody stabs me in the back and gets away with it. Well, when you list, uh, when you list the top 200 people you'd like to see at your dinner party, I think he would be somewhere around 2,000 on the list. Oh, that guy is something else. Here comes a guy that would definitely be on the list, though. Talking about the king, Jerry Lawler, back again. When uh, Still, uh, tell you what, I'm very excited about this situation that is coming up here this week. Well, I'm excited about it, too. I got a, a, another reason I wanted to mention real, real quickly. Uh, my show tomorrow, I want everybody to watch, we had uh, one of the greatest NFL football players of all time, Randy White from the Dallas Cowboys on my show tomorrow, and uh, he was here in Memphis uh, yesterday and today, I think. And also I want to mention a big, uh, I, I, I was up in Evansville, Indiana a, a few months ago, and I went into a shoe store, needed some shoes, went into the shoe store, and I saw the shoe store up there called Carnival Shoes. And it was like the craziest thing that I've ever been in my life. I mean, they had, you go inside, they had a big jukebox going, they had a disc jockey there, they had streamers. I mean, it was the wildest uh, uh, event, like, in a, in a shoe store, you know. So anyway, they're opening one of these up here, here in Memphis, Tennessee, and it's going to be right over by Hickory Ridge Mall. It's called Carnival Shoes. The grand opening is next Saturday, and I'm going to be out there next Saturday from 2 until 4, and I'm going to have a whole bunch of free wrestling tickets for anybody that wants to come by there and see me, and free autograph pictures out there at Carnival Shoes it's over by Hickory Ridge Mall next I'll give more information about it next Saturday from 2 until 4. And uh, that, that's all I got to say except for, like you said, I am excited about Monday night. I can hardly wait. Those guys are still in the back back there. They haven't even put their chairs down yet. They've all, each one of them have got a personalized chair. Now, the, you know, you see the Moondogs. They've always got rest in peace Jeff Jarrett or rest in peace Jerry Lawler. Well, each one of these guys have back there saying what they're going to paint on there. And it's going to be rest in peace Moondog spot or rex or whatever your names are we don't really care and one of them's going to be especially for you richard lee but these guys as i said are chomping at the bit and i promise you you may not think much of these guys you may think they're just a bunch of young punks that you guys can beat up anytime you want to but i promise you this monday night there's going to be some beating going on and these guys are fired up and moondogs 
set one inch out of that ring, and they are going to bend those chairs over your stinking head, and Richard Lee, they are going to beat you to a bloody pulp. And what's left of you guys is going to be for me and Jeff Jarrett to take care of in the ring, and we are going to pin their shoulders right to the mat and take those world tag team titles and put them around our waist Monday night. And I just want to say one more thing. Uh, can, can we get a shot of this over here? Just, what is her name again? Lauren Davenport. Lauren Davenport. Is she going to ever explain what she's doing out here and who she's trying? What are you writing down over there? Can you tell us that? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even think. She probably can't even write anyway. She's out here. She's trying to impress somebody with what she looks like. And let me tell you something. I heard about you, Lauren Davenport. I heard you've been coming around wrestling. I heard you even went over to Southland Greyhound Park last week, and ten people bet on you. So why don't you stay out of here? Because we don't need you around here, understand? Moon Dog, we're ready for you Monday night, and we are coming after you, boys. All right. Big action coming up this week. We had great action here today. And, uh, well, we had the Moon Dogs, and we thought... We were seeing uh, uh, almost a first for them in which they got a pin in the middle of the ring and then left. But uh, uh, Richard Lee had to slip that chair in yeah. there and then they picked it up and started beating on somebody. Another big day of USWA Championship Wrestling is exactly what it was. We'll have more next week. We hope you'll join us. Until then, for Corey Macklin, I'm Dave Brown. So long, everybody. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of USWA Championship Wrestling. <laughs>